So Stephen, in the end, you've decided to hang up your boots, but you've decided to stay on at Dunfermline as a first-team coach. Talk us through your thought process on the whole decision over the summer. Yeah, listen, um, when I first signed for Dunfermline under Stevie, it was a dual role. And, you know, I said to Stevie, I just want to play year by year and see how the kind of body and the mind take it. You know, I was willing to, um, you know, put myself forward for that season and then see how I was at the end of it. Um, I enjoyed the coaching side of it and Stevie and Greg and Jason were great in getting me involved and, you know, hearing my opinions and my experiences in the game, which hopefully hopefully helped in some shape or form throughout the season. Um, and as we came towards the end of it, I just felt like, you know, especially when Stevie... Um, I was speaking to him after the season and I said, look, if there's opportunities there to, to become full-time staff member, then I think that's what I would lean towards making that jump. So um, I kind of left it with the club for a little while and, and obviously Stevie then decided that it was time for him to just take a step back and he had his own kind of uh, kind of issues and feelings on, on his decision. But, um, you know, that that opened, you know, an avenue and a door for me to hopefully try and get on the staff with Peter. And Peter was, you know, spoke to Peter on the phone and he was delighted to 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 work together, if you like, with Greg. So, um, you know, that's worked out and, you know, the pieces have been put in place that hopefully the three of us can get our heads together and, and get this team, you know, playing some good football and, and getting the results to go along with it. Looking back over your nearly 20 year career um how do you look back on it a lot of successes and a lot of things that you could bring into the, this young squad at Dunfermline to, to really help them develop isn't that yeah I think the fact that you know we've, we've I've managed to win kind of titles I've managed to gain promotion for Norwich and that's really what you know Dunfermline are needing so it's leaning on those experiences and trying to pass it on to the players to you know, in certain situations, just help them out by, you know, I've, li I've, I've lived that situation and this is how we dealt with it and this is what we've done. And, you know, it might just be simple things like just stay calm. It's another game, like play your game. Don't be caught up in the, you know, the situation sometimes that, like players can. So there's little things that um, I'll have gained and over the years that hopefully I can help the squad with. Do you think that, uh, when you look back at your career, not just the, the number of Scotland caps that you gained, as you said, titles that you've won, promotions that you've won, um, UEFA Cup runs and things like that. How, how do you feel that that really benefits from what you were saying there in terms of um, a team in the Scottish Championship? Because some people may look at it and say that's a, a totally different level or a, a, a totally different standard. But how could you kind of incorporate your experiences and, and help evolve this Dunfermline squad through them? I think you said the, probably the key word in there was, you know, the standards that, that, that I had to get to, to to make myself that type of player. And that's what we have to try and achieve at Dunfermline is bringing those standards up day in, day out, that it becomes good habits that allows the club to progress. If we don't, as staff, if we don't force these upon the players and demand it from them, then things can become slack and then performances can become slack. So it's it's our job to make, at the right environment first and foremost and then it's about kind of giving the details to the players and how we're going to play and how we're going to go about it so there's, there's it doesn't matter what kind of level you played it it matters about you know how what we're trying to create here and and i think yeah my experiences and knowing what it kind of takes that yeah i can kind of let the players know that when you look at um the experiences that you had say internationally and you look at now kevin is but all at Dunfermline just a couple of seasons ago and scoring the other night in the Euro 2020 squad. Could you as a coach now use that as a kind of a bar for the Dunfermline players to get to? Could you could you go and really show the youngsters this is where you can go if you, if you put in, in the work and, and, and really uh, listen and, and work hard? Without a doubt, I think everyone, you know, loves that type of story where, you know, they've been the underdog and they've maybe had to take a step back to then, you know, the penny drops sometimes that actually, you know, I should be playing at a better level 
than what I'm what I am. But what what does it then take that player to get there? And um, I'm sure Kevin's you know put the work in. You know that's first and foremost. Things aren't handed to you. You have to go and earn it. And he's done that by you know finding a consistency and a level of playing for the Fermlin that gets him noticed at Hibs. He then has to, he realises he has to step up again. So then his performance level has to be good. Again, he's in, again, another environment. So it's, it's a constant, it's constant pushing yourself to realise your potential. And some players don't want to find that push um, and they're happy kind of where they are. But it's, you know, it's our job to try and find the right characters and the right players with the mentality to, that they want to progress and get better. Overall, just in general terms about your career, I done a quick uh, bit of maths there before we came on, so hopefully I got it right. But if you include club and country, I think it was 609 appearances in total and 42 goals. So are you pretty satisfied with the way that your, your career's went and now really looking forward to, to trying to achieve just as much on the coaching side? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I was always a player that would want to play. Um I think it was only really Norwich that I kind of found myself, you know, not, not, not I wouldn't say not wanted, but, you know, where I've dropped out the team at stages that, I, you know, that was the first time I kind of came up against that. You know, I, everywhere else I was, I was kind of playing football. So that's kind of why I had the experience of, you know, playing over 600 games, competitive games. Um, and that's that's what I, that's what I'll lean on through all the the appearances and games. You know how many were good, how many were bad. You know the key element of that is, I knew I gave a hundred percent every time I was on the park. So, you know, if you do that, then you just like I say, you don't know how far, you know, giving your all every time you're out there can take you. Looking specifically at last season when you were a, a player coach at Dunfermline. Did you feel it was a success in terms of we made the playoffs or did you feel that in the end going out to race overs in the quarterfinals maybe ended the season a little bit uh, on a sure note maybe? I think I could think there was ups and downs and I think there was you know good points and bad points throughout the season. Um, we just never found that level of consistency over the period to probably push into the top two. And I think out with Hearts who you know, got the points on board. Sometimes they got criticised for their performance, but at the end of the day, they got a lot more points than the rest of us. You know, the rest done the Wraith Rovers ourselves and made the playoffs. We, all, we were all a bit inconsistent at times throughout the season, hence why we were all fighting over that second, third and fourth position. Um, I think we deserve to make the playoffs. I think our play throughout the season deserved that. Um, and the playoff games, there's such small margins that you... You either make it or you don't. And um, I think everyone who analysed the games, we had the, the opportunities to take the lead in, in kind of both legs. And um, we never quite, you know, had the cutting edge to do that. So that's where we fall, fell short a little bit in the two particular games. But, um, you know, the effort and the, the endeavour of the boys was never in question throughout, throughout the whole campaign. I know online since... Um, the announcement yesterday came that you had decided to to retire and just stick to the coaching side. A lot of Dunfermline fans in particular have said they felt you could have carried on for another season. Do you feel yourself you could have and it was just you decided maybe the time was right to, to focus solely on the coaching side or did you feel last season you maybe struggled with the dual role? Um, yeah, not struggled, but found it hard at times to balance the two. Um I think I'm a player or a person that when I'm kind of all in to be a player, then I'll look after myself and I'll do the right things at the right times. And I've always done that throughout my career. So I would feel a bit, you know, I'd be cheating the club if I never approached it in that way. Um, whereas now if I've I made the decision not to play, I can fully focus and give them everything that I have um, on the coaching side of it. So that was kind of where the decision lied was. Um, yeah, the body might have held up for another season, but I felt like there had to be a, a focus on one or the other. And then um, I think it was a good time and it, it felt like the right time to, to make that transition over to the, to the staff. So what has been the early conversations with Peter Grant from yourself and Greg Shields heading into next season? Peter has already spoken in his first interview regarding wanting to 
really go for promotion. You have to start the race to win it and he wants to be there the full season. I'm guessing yourself in particular as well as Greg will be of the same mindset and have the same goals and ambitions. Without a doubt, I think we've all seen the progression in the club and that's, you know, the club are, are going places, if you like, with it, with the way they're trying to structure the club. Uh, we know it's a big club. We know it should be in the SPL and it's kind of our jobs to help that all come come into, play, into place, if you like. So, um, you know, myself, Greg, uh, you know, we'll help Peter in any which way we can um, to get the best out of these group of boys. And um, I'm sure we'll add a few on, along the way and we'll maybe lose a few, but, that, you know, that's football. Uh, we need to try and get the the right balance and the right characters in the squad that uh, they're going to drive themselves to to push this club uh, to promotion. You maybe find it strange not doing the running part of pre-season this year. Maybe enjoy it more actually putting the players through it, but I suppose you'll be um, excited to get your, your teeth into the ground and, and, and get going when, when pre-season starts, I'm sure, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it's probably one bit of it that I'm not going to miss is, is the running uh, side of the, the game. I think when you get older, it gets a little bit harder and you get a little bit slower and you're crossing the, the, the line and you know, you're no first and second anymore for it that way. So, um, now nah, listen, it's part and parcel of football. The guys know that that are there, that the hard work needs to be put in to, to set yourself up for the season. So, it's no different to any other words. They'll, they'll be working hard through pre-season to, to put themselves in the best chance to, to start the season well and continue that um, form. It's been great speaking to you today. All the best for the rest of the season. Hope we we'll catch up throughout the campaign. Sure we will. Thanks. Thanks, John.